Christian Living 101 presents a Bible class on the fundamental basics of victorious Christian living. Establish a strong foundation for conquering the trials and temptations of daily life. Increase your faith and learn to use the powerful weapons of spiritual warfare. Now we join Christian Living 101 in progress. You know, we haven't said much about it for a while, but uh, we want you to know that we appreciate the ministry of uh, Jim Lynch and Luke Smith as they lead worship for us. They're going to start out the service today with worship. Uh, we've been mixing in a little bit of uh, music from Beth, my lovely wife, as uh, she sings some of the songs and the choruses uh, that uh, I think you folks will like. And so uh, we're going to intermingle some of uh, Jim and Luke's songs and, and some of her songs, and I trust that you'll enjoy singing along with them. And so right now we just turn it to Jim, and uh, you take over, Jim, and we'll go from here. God bless you. I've got a river of life. I've got a river of life flowing out of me. Make the lane to walk and the blind to the sea. Open trees and doors and the Catholic tree. I've got a river of life flowing out of me. Spring up, oh well. Thank you. 
Praise the Lord. Now our subject today is going to be preparing for adversity. This will be lesson number five in the series. And uh, the subtitle is uh, Obedience is Better Than Sacrifice. We'll begin with the scripture this morning from 1 Samuel 15, 22. That's chapter 15, verse 22. And I read, And Samuel said, Hath the Lord as great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as in obeying the voice of the Lord? Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice, and to hearken than the fat of rams. Now I want to just discuss that a little bit. Uh, that's a scripture that uh, perhaps we overlook sometimes. And I find it very uh, unusual for people to really dwell upon this scripture. Uh, somehow or another, I think it sort of grates against our old carnal nature. Uh, because I found down through the years uh, that many people want to bargain with God. The children of Israel, God's chosen people, were constantly trying to bargain with God. They wanted to do things that they felt they could do that would take a little extra effort and, and uh, that that would make up for their disobedience in the commands of Almighty God and uh, the Lord Jesus Christ, our Savior and Redeemer today. Now, of course, they didn't know him as Jesus in those days. Uh, he was the Word of God, as we find written in the uh, first uh, chapter of the book of John. But as we think about these things... Uh, I want to ask you a question. Have you ever tried to bargain with God? Oh, no, Pastor, I would never do that. Oh, really? Well, now let's take a look and see about this. How many times have we come before the Lord? Yes, there was a time when I was guilty of it too, but I, by the grace of God, I think that I've learned better. And that was, now, Lord, if you'll just answer this prayer, I'll do so and so. And Lord, if you'll just uh, uh, give this to me, I'll uh, serve you the rest of my life. Uh, God, if you will, uh, if you'll just uh, uh, let me have this little thing that I really want to do and really like to do, I'll pay my tithe. Oh my, if that's not trying to bargain with God, I don't know what is. Do you? Now let's think about it. I wonder how many people have ever won an argument with God or have ever been successful with bargaining with God. Now, yes, God may by His grace answer some of your prayers that you pray that way. It's just because out of His grace He's going to minister to you. And so uh, the next time you think about, well, now, Lord, I'm going to just do this if you'll do such and so, uh, you need to realize that uh, God is an absolute, truth is an absolute, His standards and His statutes are an absolute, His commandments are an absolute, and the last time I looked at the scripture, every benefit and every blessing and every extended uh, point of grace and mercy has a condition upon it. And that condition is that we have an obligation to do something in order uh, to qualify for that uh, outpouring of God's love or the answer to our prayers or the extending of our uh, financial resources or whatever it might be. We didn't deserve to be brought back into the kingdom of God uh, through the redemptive work of Jesus Christ on the cross of Calvary. Uh, we didn't deserve to have him die in our stead and to uh, take our sins upon him and to uh, cleanse us because uh, we believe upon him as our Lord and Redeemer. Uh, through the shedding of his blood, we uh, have been redeemed to the kingdom of God and walk as a citizen upright and, and uh, acceptable unto the Heavenly Father in the righteousness of the Lord Jesus Christ. Certainly not our own righteousness. I think all of us know that our little carnal flesh uh, gets us into trouble uh, very often. Well, anyway, today I want to talk to you about this scripture. We read it, and I want to read it to you again. He said, God doesn't delight here in burnt offerings and sacrifices, as in obeying the voice of the Lord. As we talk about preparing for adversity, we need to understand that obeying is a very key part 
to walking in the fullness of God's promise and blessing and in uh, being in a position wherein uh, we can grow strong in our faith and in our courage, in our ability to stand against the enemy when it's not easy to do. And it's a time wherein through obedience unto the Heavenly Father, we develop that close companionship and fellowship that I've been talking to you about now for several weeks. And see, the one thing that we need to realize uh, is that uh, God has promised that when we face adversity, uh, that he will be with us and go with us through it uh, if we will walk in a position before him where we can receive of his blessing and promise and uh, indeed be aware and in full uh, knowledge of his companionship and fellowship and and uh, constant present about us uh, in the very difficult moments that we may face in the days ahead. And I think most of us have already found that we face difficult moments, uh, and God, sure enough, has been there when we've walked close enough to Him uh, to understand and to be sensitive to His presence. You see, most people say, well, God just deserted me. No, that's not the problem. The problem is God's always there with us. God's always there around about us. But the problem is that we let things come into our lives that somehow or another hinder us and break the line of communication and the presence of His Spirit in our relationship. And so it's not God that has failed. It's we ourselves who have come short of the standards that God has said He would require of us if we were to walk in His kingdom through the righteousness of His only begotten Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, our Lord and Redeemer and our soon coming King. And as we talk about being the soon coming king, we're reminded as we look at what's happening in our land today and around the world, the world is in constant chaos. And we discover that there's things going on today that are the fulfillment of the prophetic testament that was given unto us in both the Old and the New Testament by the anointed men of God who warned and foretold and declared both the hard things to come and the failures of this world and the judgment that was to come upon it but also don't forget God also said if we would walk uprightly before him and if we would obey his statutes and his commandments and his word uh, that he would always be with us that he would see us through whatever situation we had to face and that he would never leave us standing alone to fight the enemy by ourselves now, beloved, I want you to understand something. Uh, you and I sometimes get careless in the way uh, that we live and in the way we listen to the Word of God. And we're more apt to be guilty of becoming so busy and preoccupied with the stuff of this world and the obstacles that we face in everyday life uh, that we grow insensitive uh, to the presence of the Lord and we don't give ourselves the time uh, the opportunity. We don't clear our mind and our spirit uh, into a position where we can really fellowship uh, with our Lord Jesus Christ, uh, our coming King, and uh, we cease to be aware of the abiding presence of Almighty God round about us in our behalf. And so we go off and we do our own thing, or we're not really sinning, we're not really doing anything that we shouldn't be doing. It's just that we aren't really walking in a place where we put God first. And out of recklessness or carelessness or uh, somehow or another just uh, uh, maybe our own carnal self-desires, uh, uh, we let the flesh rule. And the first thing we know, we have violated the commandment of God to obey. Now, when we find ourselves in that position, it's our natural tendency to say, Lord, I'm sorry. Lord, I'll make up for it. I'll do this or I'll do that. I'll make up for it, Lord. And uh, God says, no. No, you can offer all the sacrifices you want. You can do all that you want to do with your works, uh, but you don't make up for it. And I will forgive you if you'll repent. And I'll forgive you if you'll come back into fellowship with me. But no, I'm not going to accept your sacrifices of uh, the things that you will do if uh, I do something. You see, God is an established foundation that cannot be moved. 
He will not move in one little measure in the conditions that are required for us to walk in the fullness of his fellowship, of, of his power, and of his grace and love. And so, though he always loves us, yes, he does, uh, we do not always reap the benefit of that love because of disobedience, because we failed to pay attention to the directives of the Lord. Now you say, Pastor, well, just what do you mean by that? Well, I mean that every once in a while, uh, we come into a situation where uh, we just want to do something or be something or experience something uh, that um, uh, really isn't God's plan for us. It's not going to benefit anybody. It's not going to be productive in our life. It's not going to be something that's going to have any uh, effect upon us except to draw us away from the presence of the Lord and the awareness of His powerful Spirit that's always round about us. And so we fall into some part, maybe it's sin, maybe it's just something that uh, replaces our devotion unto God, uh, maybe it's a love of something that uh, is greater in our heart than our love for Almighty God and the Lord, and maybe it's uh, uh, putting somebody else ahead of the will of God in our life. Uh, Maybe it's something that uh, seems so, uh, you know, mundane and indifferent and inconsequential uh, that we think, oh, God won't pay any attention to this. But we have to remember something. God said, thou shalt have no other gods before me. Well, now, if we're to obey that, then God has to be first in our life uh, in everything and every situation that we do. Now you say, oh, God isn't interested in my marital life, or God isn't interested in my business life. Uh, God really is too busy to be concerned about uh, uh, the way I do my recreation and what I do with it. And, uh, God isn't concerned with that. I'm just going to do what I feel is uh, good for me and best for me. And uh, I'll make the decisions in this world that I think are best for me. And uh, after all, I know God's too busy to be concerned about all of that stuff. Well, the fact of the matter is, all of that stuff is exactly what God is uh, busy about. And he's busy about seeing to it that we don't fall into the trap of, of becoming so engrossed in earthly things uh, that we lose track of, of our heavenly relationship here on this earth uh, in the Lord Jesus Christ. And so we do not obey as we should obey. Now, you say, well, Pastor, I know hard times are coming. I know there's going to be difficult things that I can't even imagine that we may have to face. I understand that. And I don't, I don't really want to be outside uh, of the presence of God and the will of God and certainly outside of His covering and protecting uh, power and spirit and grace that is extended unto me through Him. But, Pastor, I, I don't know how to get close to Him. Well, if you've listened to the last four studies, uh, I've tried to tell you how to get close to him and what you need to do to be close to him and to recognize the fellowship and the uh, spiritual power and authority and blessing that he extends unto you when you do walk close to him. Now let's go to Deuteronomy uh, chapter 13 verse 4. You shall walk after the Lord your God, and fear him, and keep his commandments, and obey his voice, and ye shall serve him, and cleave unto him. That's a command of God. What's he saying? I expect you, as I lead you and direct you, and I am your God, I've chosen you to be my people, I expect you to obey that which I command you to obey. And so you're going to walk after my direction and commandments. And uh, I want you to fear me. That word fear in our English language has an application uh, that has many different meanings. Uh, but this particular meaning says I'm going to uh, reverence, uh, respect, honor uh, my God. And I'm going to uh, pay particular homage unto him uh, in my spirit, in my mind, uh, and in the acts of my body in obedience unto his commandments and to his word. And so I am obligated by the word of God, since I am a chosen vessel of God, have the benefits of the uh, sacrifice of Jesus Christ uh, in my life for my uh, sin forgiven. Uh, I have an obligation then to serve him. Jeremiah 7, 22, 23 says something that most people never read, never hear, 
seldom uh, preached from the pulpit. It says, I spake not unto your fathers, nor commanded them in the day that I brought them out of the land of Egypt concerning burnt offerings or sacrifices. But this day I commanded them, saying, Obey my voice, and I will be your God, and you shall be my people, and walk ye in all the ways that I have commanded you, that it may be well with you. Now, you'll remember just a few moments ago, we were talking about Christians uh, uh, that call themselves Christians, and, and I'm not going to challenge uh, uh, the fact that, uh, yes, they can be Christians, and, and they can fall short. We all fall short, and thank God for His grace and His love and the purging power of the blood of Jesus Christ. Uh, uh, I understand uh, uh, that uh, when I make a mistake as a child of God, uh, I can repent of that, turn away from it, ask for forgiveness and cleanse and I'm renewed in my relationship with the Lord because uh, I have uh, obeyed the conviction of the Holy Spirit upon my heart and I've said, Lord, I failed, I, I'm wrong and uh, I ask your forgiveness and, and to renew my cleansing in the blood of Christ. Well, uh, as we think about that, uh, then certainly this scripture that we find in Jeremiah uh, causes us to understand the importance of the fact that Jesus uh, is our sacrifice, uh, he is our Passover, the Bible tells us, uh, and he is uh, uh, that one that has paid all the due for us. We need to remember that the deliverance from uh, Egypt uh, uh, by the hand of God uh, was an illustration, a representation um, of the mighty covenant that God uh, uh, made from the very beginning. The uh, Bible says before the foundation of the earth uh, uh, that we should have uh, a relationship with the Lord that was spiritual through the righteousness of His only begotten Son. And so what he's doing here is he's saying, when I brought them out of the land of Egypt, I didn't speak to them about setting up and getting their sacrifices in order. I spoke to them about obeying my voice, obeying my statutes and my commandments. And if they would obey them, that things would go well with them in their life. Well, so then is it possible? In fact, is it probable? In fact, is it even perhaps a reality that we bring a lot of the heavy load and bondage that we feel in this world upon us ourselves because we fail to keep the commandments of God? You see, where I break the commandment of God, there is always a price to be paid. Now, it might not mean... Uh, that uh, uh, when that happens periodically, that I'm instantly erased from the book of life. Uh, but it does mean that if I do not continue to cleanse myself through the blood of Christ and honest repentance, uh, uh, that I'm in a position where it can come to the point that it will separate me and uh, uh, that I will no longer have a portion of the blessings of God in eternity. You say, oh, pastor, I never heard that. I don't believe that. I, I just can't believe that, that uh, I, I could lose out with God because after all, you know, I was saved. I was redeemed. I was baptized. But did you keep the word of God? Did you live to the best of your ability according to God's commandments? Did you follow his instruction, both in the Old Testament and the New Testament? Did you walk in a place where he can communicate with you and you're on call 24 hours a day, day or night, where the Holy Spirit can meet you and deal with you and bring you to that point wherein you serve the Lord with all of your heart and go do the things that God has commanded you to do? Are you sensitive enough in relationship with your, with your Heavenly Father and your Lord that the Holy Spirit has instant access into your life? Or do you have to brush a bunch of cobwebs out? Uh, you have to clean out a room in your heart? Uh, you have to somehow or another discipline your spirit to get in touch with God? And then the Holy Spirit can deal and minister to you and give direction and wisdom to you. Well, I don't know about you, but I found myself living in this world for a long time 
And I came to the conclusion years ago that uh, the thing that is best for me is to always walk close enough to the Lord that the Holy Spirit has constant access. Whether I'm awake or asleep, He can suddenly draw me to attention and I can hear His voice speaking uh, the will, the wisdom, the understanding, the knowledge, whatever it may be that I need, of God. You say, oh, Pastor, that sounds... That sounds so super spiritual. No, it's not super spiritual at all. It's spiritual dependency upon one who loves me and has all knowledge and ability and who has said he would guide my life and direct me by the work of the Holy Spirit until Jesus comes back to rule and to reign over this old earth. Well, then that puts it in a different perspective, doesn't it? And so I implore you, I urge you, to always keep yourself close in your fellowship with the Lord. Any time that you realize you've slipped, uh, your flesh has ruled uh, uh, your spirit instead of your spirit ruling your flesh, uh, you've uh, uh, committed sin, you've displeased God, you've come into a, a place where you know you've violated the commandments of God and the word of the Lord, it's the time, the minute that you know that, the minute the Holy Spirit quickens you in that is the moment that you need to say, Oh God, forgive me. I I'm sorry. I, I ask you to cleanse me afresh. And Lord, wipe that thing out of my life. And you need to go on serving Him with great attention then. And so the point is, and we're going to have to conclude this message quickly, the point is, however, that we are obligated before God to obey His Word, to obey the directions of His Holy Spirit, to walk in the fullness of, of the promises of God, and to let the Holy Spirit give us strength and ability to see the sin that lies before us, to avoid that sin, and when we carelessly enter into it, to quickly get rid of it through instant of, of repentance and asking God to cleanse us afresh. Now, you say, well, I can just do what I want to do and I'll just ask God to forgive me. Let me tell you something, and I won't have time to get into it right now, but I'll tell you this. God says that when we sin willfully, and there is a difference, when we sin willfully, that we actually crucify the Lord Jesus Christ of flesh, and that there is no further, no more, uh, remission of sin for us. And so there comes a point when I say, I'm going to enjoy sin, that's entering into it willfully. I'm going to do this thing because I want to do, and I'll just ask God to forgive me later. Uh, when we get into that position, we're in deep, deep trouble. And you need to recognize uh, that now you're walking in that place where you can lose your uh, citizenship in the kingdom of God and your ability to live eternally with Him throughout the ages to come. So, beloved, I'm just telling you, I know some of you don't want to hear this, but it's time for us to shape up. It's time for us to obey God. It's time for us to get involved in knowing what His Word uh, tells us to do. It's time for us to cultivate our ability to uh, listen to the Holy Spirit and, and to fellowship with Him in our spirit and let Him fellowship with us in our spirit. It's time for us to get wrapped up in all of the glory, the power, the blessings, the giftings of God Himself that we might be prepared to face the adversity that lies ahead of us. And I tell you, according to the prophecies of the Old Testament and the New, we find uh, that the signs are about us that we are already in the midst of, of adversity that's going to grow increasingly uh, difficult uh, and uh, hard to bear. And so, beloved... Obey the Lord, obey Him willfully, obey Him with great desire, obey Him with excitement and enter into His promises as He's given them to you and let the power and the Spirit of God be the only director of your life and the ruler of your life. Does that mean you don't use your head with common sense? Of course not. 
but it does mean the Holy Spirit can help to direct you into what common sense is and direct you into uh, the decision you should make when according to worldly reason and, and the understanding that we have in our carnal mind that it looks good but the Spirit knows it isn't and we may come up against a situation where the Spirit says no, no, don't take that path and that's all we get. We don't know why but we need to be aware that we walk with the Spirit close enough and we are uh, certainly able to identify his voice when he speaks to our spirit that we don't have to say why we just say okay okay I'll turn and I'll go the other pathway we don't understand how important it is to let obedience rule our life we don't want to pay the price of sacrifice because we were disobedient and so the subject today and the subtitle, Obedience is Better Than Sacrifice in Preparing to Face Adversity that Lies Before Us Every Day and Will Become Stronger as the Days Go By. Well, it's time for us to serve communion. We're going to do that in just a moment. I trust you'll enjoy this ministry and music, and we will come back and serve communion with you, uh, and I trust you'll take it with us there, wherever you are, uh, in your home, your motel room, whatever, and uh, uh, we will uh, share together the great blessing that we have through remembering the price that Jesus paid on the cross of Calvary for our redemption and well-being here on this earth. Praise the Lord. Above the mountains, yes, I've climbed them. I've felt the sunshine on my shoulder and those warm winds blow. You ask me about. the teardrops I felt his hand reaching out 
Let's go to the book of Luke, the beginning with uh, chapter 22, and we'll read from verse 14. Now, this is where Jesus had said it's time for us to uh, celebrate the Passover, and uh, the disciples had already gone before him and made preparation, and so now he comes upon the scene, and it says this, And when the hour was come, he sat down, and the twelve apostles with him, and he said unto them, with desire, I have desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. Now, we've talked about that a number of times before, but it reminds us that indeed Jesus enjoyed and appreciated and I believe felt a, a, a sense of support from his disciples who had been with him throughout the entire time of his ministry. And then he goes on in verse number uh, 16, and he says, And he took the cup, and he gave thanks, and he said, Take this, divide it among yourselves. I say unto you, I will not any more eat thereof until it be fulfilled in the kingdom of God. And he took the cup, and gave thanks, and said, Take this, divide it among yourselves. For I say unto you, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God shall come. And he took the bread and gave thanks and break it, gave unto them, saying, This is my body which is given for you, this do in remembrance of me. Likewise also the cup after sup, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood which is shed for you. I want you to understand that when he says this is a New Testament, it means that it is a new and a different covenant than what the children of Israel had in the Old Testament. Does it mean the Old Testament covenant is done away? No, it means it's been fulfilled through the righteousness of Jesus Christ, our Lord, as he hung upon the cross and took our sins upon him. And so uh, what we're talking about here is the reality that now we walk under the cleansing flow, a renewal of our spirit in fellowship with the Heavenly Father, wherein our spirit was dead unto righteousness, and now through life in Jesus Christ and His righteousness, we have life in our spirit. We live in the righteousness of God. And so as we take of the cup and of the bread, we are reminded that we walk in a blessed position wherein we don't have to 
force the flesh uh, uh, to come into obedience as they did in the Old Testament wherein they offered continual sacrifices for their sin year after year. But now we can walk before the Lord in continual cleansing power as we obey Him and make Him the real genuine Lord of our life, the only Lord, the only God that we serve. Now as we take of the bread, let us pray and ask God's blessing upon it, shall we? Heavenly Father, we acknowledge that this broken bread has no leaven within it. Lord, it's purified and cleansed from leaven, which represents the contaminants of this world. And Father, we present it to you and ask you to bless it as we receive it in remembrance of the awful price that our Lord paid at the whipping post and at the cross. Bless it, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Let us eat together. juice of the vine toward you. We ask you to bless it. We drink it in remembrance and understanding that it represents the shed blood of your only begotten Son that cleanses us from all sin. We thank you for that promise, Lord, and we thank you, Jesus, for what you did for us on the cross of Calvary. And now as we drink together, let it be a blessing and a ministering force within our lives, both spiritually and physically, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let us drink together. Praise the Lord. Now, Heavenly Father, as we come to you in closing prayer, we ask you to bless the word that's gone forth. Let the Holy Spirit work in the lives of each and every one of us. Lord, minister to those who need to make a change in their daily walk with you. And Heavenly Father, I pray those who have not yet chosen to serve you, would come into knowledge of you as Lord and Redeemer in their life. And so, Lord, until we meet again next week, we ask you to bless this ministry to the people who listen in Jesus' name. Abide with us all, wherever we may be. Keep and protect us. And, Lord, we give you all praise for it. And we give glory to our Heavenly Father. Amen. And amen. You have been listening to Christian Living 101 with Pastor Gene Applegate. This study is presented without church or organizational bias. We are totally supported by your prayers and generosity. Your comments and questions are welcome. Email us at gene at christianliving101.org or write to Christian Living 101. P.O. Box 72150, Phoenix, Arizona, 85050. That's gene at christianliving101.org or write us at Christian Living 101, P.O. Box 72150, Phoenix, Arizona, 85050.